the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very powerful. Um, hallelujah. There are certain times in our lives when God brings messages that can alter our destinies. Every message is important. I believe it is powerful. But there are certain times when God just steps in and grants you keys and revelations that will make you so powerful and so blessed. I believe that if you take seriously what you are going to hear tonight, it will open us to new dimensions of glory in the name of Jesus. Help us tonight, dear Spirit of God. You are the only helper we have. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that a Christian can have in his life it's not just the ability to pray. It's not just the ability to, to study God's word. It's not even just the ability to love God. But one of the greatest assets that a believer can have is the ability to interpret spiritual things. Hallelujah. The ability to relate the things that happen in the earth realm from the perspective of the heavens. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times. Praise God. When in the days of Belshazzar, the Bible says that there was a handwriting that came from the realm of the spirit and wrote on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. And no man, including the soothsayers and the magicians, could interpret it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that we need in these days as believers is to contend for that place in the spirit where we are able to interpret the handwritings that are on the wall so that we can understand the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. We can understand the pathways in the spirit. And this is what we seek to enforce in this place. All the principles that we teach in this place, all of the times of prayer and impartation, is to open us to that point in the spirit where we are able to relate with spiritual things. For the Bible says, the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because it takes a level of discernment in the spirit to interpret it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I was excited when the Lord asked me to share what I'm about to share tonight. Because I believe that someone's life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on a subject I title Activating Breakthroughs. Activating Breakthroughs. And then you put a colon. The Ministry of Destiny help us. Activating Breakthroughs. Colon. The ministry of destiny help us. The beauty of Christianity, please listen, look up. The beauty of Christianity is that every time we relate to God, either in worship, in fastings, in prayer, there is always a response from heaven. Hallelujah. A response from heaven to this earth realm. 
Hallelujah. And so God responds to us by releasing miracles, by releasing signs, wonders, by granting us the ability to partake of his success. Hallelujah. Christianity is very, will be very unfair on the part of God if the believers do not have an opportunity to participate in the love and the honor and the glory that God carries. I love the song that the worship team just rendered. That not only does God want to use us, but he wants us to have the opportunity to partake of everything that he has. It establishes our oneness and his desire to bless us. Hallelujah. And so the subject of breakthrough has been something on my mind. I've seen churches and ministries passionate about God, passionate about the things of God. I've seen ministries that fast, that pray, call upon the name of God. They walk in holiness and righteousness. But not many of their congregations ever truly experience breakthroughs. Hallelujah. The sick people come, they go back sick. The oppressed people come, they go back oppressed. The only notable thing that happens in that environment is that there are souls being saved. And while that is wonderful and great, what about families that are in bondages? What about destinies that have been tied down? What about people who need to step into the blessings of God? Hallelujah. And eventually, the congregations begin to ask questions and say, is, is God not interested in our personal well-being? Is he just interested in using us for his glory? Is he just interested in watching us pray and fast, you know, interceding for souls and so on and so forth? Is he just interested in seeing us serve him? What do we have? What package has he designed? Is he insensitive to our needs? Is he unaware of the challenges that our families have hallelujah is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies if yes is he interested in doing anything about it hallelujah and it's important that as we minister to god's people we open them up to everything that can be obtained in god by god's grace we teach you prayer we teach you how to walk in the world. We teach you how to live in obedience to God. But we must also expose you to the dimensions of God that can release breakthroughs in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we take testimonies every week. As a symbol of what God is doing in the lives of his people. Because you see, when you receive personal results in your life, you are motivated to follow God. That may not be your primary reason but it can motivate you is that true when when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared where's the gentleman that shared about his mom you can imagine now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the ad atmosphere of god's presence his mom gets healed somewhere hallelujah do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into god believers are motivated if you see he said when john the baptist sent that they should ask jesus christ if he was the messiah he didn't answer the disciples he just turned and began to heal the sick began to do miraculous things and then when he was done he told john he told the disciples say go and tell john what you have seen in other words the kingdom of god should find visible expression the kingdom of god represents the entirety of god's sovereignty his power if God is as powerful as we preach, if God is as great, if he's as loving and caring as we teach, then don't you think that at a point in your life, your life should experience some testimonies that can encourage you, that you can have a message for yourself and say, I have seen the hand of God in my life. I have seen the intervention of God. I've seen breakthroughs in my families. And I told God something. I said, Lord, I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results. Hallelujah. 
I don't want to just come and deceive God's people. And it's not enough just to fall down and stand up. If you're falling down, it's not producing results. You will get angry one day. Hallelujah. But thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. And so I'm sharing on activating breakthroughs. In my personal life and in my journey in the spirit, there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life. Please take this teaching very seriously. Four things. Every time a man is about to step into prophetic defining moments, moments of breakthrough. I'm not just talking of one testimony here. Realms of breakthrough where God is about to step into a life and truly do something notable. There are four things that happen. When you approach that season of your life, I'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come. Hallelujah. Again, one of the things I learned watching the film Lord of the Rings is the fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms. And what made these people warriors was not just the ability to fight, but the ability to understand seasons. Hallelujah. When other men just stumbled into seasons, those men could look and discern. I remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said blood had been shed in the night. The ability to look. When other people are just looking, you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying this has happened because something is happening. The wise men Hallelujah. The wise men saw a star. And while other people were saying, ah, ah, why is the earth shining like this? They understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to. Hallelujah. So while the star was supposed to lead men to where Jesus was, some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy. Yet others were taking advantage of the season. So, I don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm. Hallelujah. I want you to be able to see prophetic things. That when you see handwritings on the wall, you don't just pass it. Many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough. Because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life. Many families would have risen from where they are from where they are into the prophetic destiny that God has for them but because they do not know how to understand spiritual things so follow me tonight four things number one when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray an irresistible urge to pray not just to pray with in a group know that these are prophetic signposts these are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough and I will explain to you why these things happen spirit of prayer how many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell it's not like you are not prayerful but maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest you are praying every time you are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not even know but because you have yielded yourself to the holy spirit the holy spirit must not always speak to you his ultimate um desire is to lead you not just to speak to you that your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you you can permit him to carry out what the bible says the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness he didn't say jesus let's go jesus's body was so yielded to the holy ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the holy spirit and the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is one who is led of the spirit so every time 
you are about to step into prophetic seasons of breakthrough you know what a breakthrough is a breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted that's a breakthrough when there is a stronghold when there is a mountain when there is a limitation when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny by whatever spiritual agency when that barrier is lifted we call it a breakthrough so number one what the spirit of prayer suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour but you find out that there is grace to pray grace to pray while you're praying it's like there's an endless supply while you're praying you can sense in the spirit that things are happening you cannot tell what it is that is happening but you know that the more you press your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing i'm not talking of laughing in the spirit joy that you cannot explain because a cord is being hit in the spirit but many people when they get to that point because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs and they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come are you getting blessed number two when you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life the second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give an unusual grace to give an unusual grace when you are about to step into those prophetic seasons suddenly you lose value of everything around you you just know that i can give anything and it won't matter again when that begins to happen to you take note have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes and you can carry about 20 or 30 percent of them and just say i'm going to sew it and i tell you there is a dissociation between you and those things is because you are about to step into a new level you see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage if you could take advantage of it you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs this that i'm teaching you is born out of the word of god and practical experiences hallelujah there are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing god tells you go for a retreat quick you are supposed to travel god just summons you and says go for a retreat the moment that happens make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment hallelujah because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth it is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life so number one the spirit of prayer an unusual urge to pray to travel in the spirit you just find yourself blessing the lord you're sleeping in the night and god wakes you that sleep cannot come back again and you are just praying in the spirit that's a sign that a door is about to open for you in the spirit but many of you wake up and when you see your colleague sleeping just say kai let me just 15 minutes exactly by the grace of god i won't add 15 minutes you even put one leg down on your bed so that you can wake up and you wake up and see that it's six o'clock and you see the holy spirit does not struggle with the human spirit are you listening to me because it's not a demon the moment he begins to communicate to you is a language in the spirit he's telling you watch this something is happening in the realm of the spirit can you stand so that you will step into this major season hallelujah number two an unusual urge to give not just i'm not just talking of giving money alone but suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have it's like a string that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life and you know at that point 
if God asks you to empty your bank account or if God asks you to give it anything, you can lose it. Including your family members. It's not like you don't love them. I'm just giving you languages in the spirit. You know that there's nothing, nothing. And you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer. You begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment. You don't even know why you are singing those songs. Have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what God is saying. It's not bad, but mm -mm, this is not the song. Hallelujah. When you step in church and they just sing a song, we can sing a powerful song like um, more of you, more of you. It's nice, but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit. And even you, you think you are backsliding. No, no. You just sit down. You are, not, you are not connecting. You are even feeling guilty about it. You are wondering why you are not connecting. Hallelujah. Then suddenly they raise another song. I lay it all down again. And you start crying. You don't even know what is happening. It's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with. The moment they begin to sing that song, anything that has to do with laying it down, forgetting about it, you know, your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing. May not make sense to you, but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number three, when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough, I mean major seasons, number three, there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness. Suddenly, you notice that it's as if all hell is breaking loose over you. As if the Satan, I mean the devil just told all the demons, say, look, just leave everybody, chase Wumi, find Wumi anywhere you see her, look for her. Hallelujah. Have you seen people like that? So it looks like the more they are praying for you, the issue is getting worse. Hold on. That's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit. Because many people are taught to judge these things. Do you know why? You see, Satan does not know your future. But the moment a prophetic word is uttered, what happens? There is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities. Suddenly, it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit. What? Because they know that Satan knows. He was an angel before, I hope you know. So he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels, something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm. Hallelujah. And suddenly, confrontations from the power of darkness, they begin to bring arrows of discouragement, impatience, procrastination, offense. Suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues. Why did you bring the tea in this green cup? Is this the cup I use every day? And you are wondering, you are like, Daddy, what is this whole thing? If you learn to judge from the spirit, you see why you start by unusual ability to pray? Because there will be contentions. Are you getting blessed tonight? Suddenly, you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell. Someone looks at you and says, beautiful hair. He says, eh, mock me. Ah, even you, you are finding what is wrong. People say, you are being so edgy. You are being offensive. What is wrong? Say, even me, I don't know what is happening. But God is telling you, go and pray. Because you are stepping into prophetic moments. Are you listening to me? The powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life. And on legal grounds, hinder what God wants to do. Are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory? You see why God will give you? Are you seeing that? This is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come, God will distract you with praise. So that before you realize the breakthrough can come. So you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it. You don't even know why you are dancing. Because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. Many people have lost it at this point suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you 
You are about to go and pray. You are sensing in your spirit. And somebody comes and says, let me tell you something. Selina, um, I wouldn't have told you, but let me tell you. Do you know what your sister said? And you are like, what again? These are dangerous seeds that, that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life. Hallelujah. Or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes. And your mother says, do you know what happened? There was an accident. Ah -ah. In your dreams, you are seeing your family members rejoicing. You haven't seen them cutting cake. In the physical, you are hearing that one car has. At such times, many people just dampen their spirit. The Bible says, for as long as the hands of Moses kept, it, it was up. What happened? There was victory. When Aaron and her were tired and they began to bring the hand, what happened? How can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front? Many people do not understand spiritual pathways. And I'm telling you, the more you have this knowledge, the more you will reign in life. unusual confrontations in fact for some of you they may even be direct confrontations you're just walking and for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die you will die and you carry that mindset it's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life that's the day you got up and found out that your shirts that they eye on your roommate why is hey god let me kill somebody today where is she prophetic moments notice that the moment that season is aborted all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life are you are you listening to me prophetic seasons and then number four number four is suddenly you will begin to attract certain people called destiny helpers destiny helpers there will be prophetic unusual encounters please let me have two people my god open our eyes tonight teach us mysteries in the spirit come you stand up here kenny sam just stay down hallelujah watch this this is a level. Look up, everybody. This is a level. Is that correct? This gentleman wants to step into this level. And he has been walking. Now he has gotten to this prophetic shift. Hallelujah. While he's praying and fasting, this is what happens. Can I have a third person? Anybody? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Suddenly, God. You just be walking, sir. Yes, just be coming. And God comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers. Their job, hold his hands, is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave. Sam, you climb, climb up, Femi, go back. That's their job. Sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again. Follow me tonight. God bless you, sirs. Four things happen to believers. This is the structure of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara, what happened? They were in the boat, in, a, in, a, in their boat. Is that correct? Suddenly, the sea started getting boisterous. Question. Was that the first time they were going by sea? I hope you realize that the sea was not just doisterous. It was the demons, the legions of devils that were in the man at Gadara that were reacting, attempting to stop them from coming. Hallelujah. Notice, did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at Jesus Christ? They got offended. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When Jesus woke up, he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said shalom what happened the bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves 
Who told him Jesus was coming? Because the moment Jesus stepped into Gadara, he was there waiting. He was the first person he met. Hallelujah. Did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father? That ever, how can a man be having accidents every month? When I don't watch so much of football, but when you are in a serious match, I don't mean friendlies just to shake yourself and change jerseys. Real match that can change the destiny of a nation. Hallelujah. When you are about to score, what happens? The people, they tell them, do everything. Quacking, killing, just do everything. Stop this guy from scoring. You find out that the hostility increases. Because at that point, a single goal can make the difference. Are you understanding this? Many people and many families have missed out on cycles. It's like a spiritual cycle. When you miss it, it will come back. But it won't come back immediately so your job is to stand and discern when you see that cloud moving you begin to walk with the holy ghost to make preparations for the things that god wants to release hallelujah i'll not talk about the first three i'll talk very briefly about the last one destiny help us who are these men who are these strange beings that seem to come to to, to stand by people in the path of destiny. Please write. Destiny help us are men and women that we find on our road to breakthroughs. Our road to destiny. Who provide help for the next level of our lives, our miracles and our destiny. There are men that we meet on our path to destiny. I'm going to be showing you from God's word. And you'll see how consistent this is. Say in the name of Jesus. I activate breakthroughs in my life. The Bible says. In the book of Genesis 41. If you turn there the story of Joseph. Look up please. Joseph had a great destiny. Is that correct? He had a dream and he told his brothers. He said, brothers, I saw you people bowing to me. The brothers said, you will see, we'll kill you before that will happen. And they sold him. Is that correct? Do you realize, let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey. The Bible says it was at the time he entered the well that certain Egyptians were passing. Why did they not pass before? Or after forget the fact that they bought him but they were the vehicles that transported him he didn't pay transport fare they transported him into where Potiphar's house do you know that Egypt was his geographical location of breakthrough are you listening to me so how was he going to go there his father would never allow him to go to Egypt I hope you know and so certain Egyptians in the name of buying him while they were carrying him he did not know that prophetically there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny hold on when he gets to Egypt the Bible says that he went into the prison now watch this every time you are about to take a journey into destiny before you start, God will show you something that you will hold in that journey. For Moses, it is a rod. For Joseph, it is a dream. God will say, note it. One day, we'll make reference with. You will never start your journey without knowing what he gave you. Many of us have thrown it. That jar is it, it, no good because it does not look. For Moses, he said, you hold this rod. A day will come. When he got to that point in the Red Sea, he said, remember the rod. Now Moses, stretch that rod. A time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in. Hallelujah. For Joseph, he had nothing but a simple dream. A simple dream. Are you following me tonight? He had a simple dream. And while these guys were taking, did he like it? 
but he was going to the geography of his breakthrough. When he got there, what happened? And this is the sign because while he was going, the Bible says God was with him. This is how you know God is with you because even in the midst of these things, you see favor. The favor and the grace of God. And the Bible says he went into prison. What happened? He was faithful. And Potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife. Watch this. Then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian. Hallelujah. And on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master, what happened? The Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there. Do you know if Joseph had slept with her, he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there. Who know that he slept with her? But he would have remained in the prison there. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Joseph was in the prison and God made it in such a way that it was when Joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons they annoyed the king. The king said go and lock them. The king let's explain. They go and lock them. And while they locked them there then Joseph steps in. Watch this. He looks at them and Joseph is worried about their state. They woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad. Hallelujah. And the wine presser said, I have a dream. Why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve? Are you following me now? God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams. Then he created that need. And the wine presser got up. Please listen. He said, I had a dream. I saw this and that and that and this and that happened. And Joseph told him, he said, wow, in three days, the king is going to call you back and you'll be reinstated to your position. The guy laughed. He said, please, when you go, don't forget me. The other guy said, ah, me too, I have my own. No. He said, what is wrong? He said, there were three baskets on my head. And vultures came and ate everything. Joseph said, well, in three days, they'll finally finish up your case. They'll bring you out and they'll go and hang you and the birds of the air will eat up your flesh. Watch this. Joseph did not know that those two people, they did not have gift, but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph. Are you seeing? Destiny helpers may not be gifted people, but they have access you have the gift but you don't have access to the king they have access to the king but they may not have the gifts hallelujah it came to pass like that and after the wine presser was reinstated the bible says he forgot joseph but watch this when it was time for joseph to step into the place of destiny what happened god now since the wine the wine presser forgot him i'm sure joseph would have been disappointed you now see that he would have been angry and said oh two years this guy kept me in this captivity and i helped him but something happened the bible says that god gave the king a dream you see it now when god is ready to lift you those who matter he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it that's how god lifts a man please listen i'm teaching you a powerful mystery because every king they had sorcerers and soothsayers this is egypt we are talking about egypt had thousands of gods they could consult but that day god shut the heavens the magicians did everything the heavens would not open and the king said you better answer my dream you better find the solution kings were cruel people those days they could wipe out a whole land because they were angry suddenly the magicians consulted and said what is happening they said we don't know and then the wine presser said something watch this 41 verse 9 41 verse 9 are you there then spoke the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember my faults this day 
So after two years, the man remembered. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison. In the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. Listen. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, now hold on. Do you know, while all of this was happening, Joseph did not know that he was at the edge. Are you listening to me? If he had missed a defining moment, he would have remained in that prison. Sometimes, could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life? Have you heard that song? I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Powerful song. Many believers have gotten to the edge and then Satan comes into it something that aborts the whole journey. and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was now listen if Joseph had his way listen if Joseph had his way and he ever met Pharaoh once do you know Pharaoh will be so impressed with Joseph that you say why are you in the prison in the first place but sometimes do you see the irony of life you can see a gifted person who graduated and he's so good and here is somebody who is a blessed man who needs that gift but the, that contact are you listening to me there are many of our loved ones that are gifted i heard the story of a gentleman who fan caught his some of his fingers and then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him and that guy could draw you know um, fine art students he could do what they call it um, abstract on the wall Praise God. And then this guy had been praying to God and said, Lord, give my family a major breakthrough. Because his mother told him, I didn't go to school. Your hands are cut, but do something. Go and learn something. And this guy was praying. Watch this. When that was happening, the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas. He said, begin to do your abstract on plenty papers and store them. Every time you see this guy drawing, people are saying, your colleagues are going out to look for a job. He said, but God told me this. Watch this. Suddenly, one day, he went to visit his friend. Huh? When he went to visit his friend, his friend was talking with someone. And it so happened that they just opened the branch. This is a true story. They opened the branch of a bank. You know, banks do abstract on their wall. And they had been looking for someone. The person who used to do it for the bank, he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him. And suddenly they just said, ah, but don't you draw. The guy came there with his file. He was ready. They said, meet at so, so, so place. And he went, do you know that that day he got a contract of over 4 million naira overnight. Why? Hold on. It wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing. Do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know their destiny helpers? God conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them. The destiny helpers themselves never know they are destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it. The wine presser, if the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of, of Egypt, you think he would treat him the way he treated him? Hallelujah. And then let me rush. They call Joseph. I like, I like, I like the way. Let's look at um, verse 14. 14. Are you there? 41, verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen, Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper the wine presser the wine presser said i testified that there was a time i needed help hallelujah and a hebrew guy called joseph by this time do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving without you don't have the luxury of shaving and this you were looking like a, a native doctor and the bible says i'll show you from scripture verse 14 and pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of where the dungeon 
It's only your destiny partners that can connect you to come out of some dungeons. You may be gifted, but you will remain in some dungeons until some destiny partners come. Do you know that many of our family members, they are praying in tongues and they are gifted. Let me announce to everybody here, there is something you have that is in desperate demand. The distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny help. If you never find these destiny helpers, you can die a failure in life. I've seen this happen so many times. Hallelujah. When we were about to get the venue for this place, when God began to speak to us about Koinonia, we were praying. You know how difficult it is to get venue. Hallelujah. We were even looking for a place to pay for. And I began to pray. I began to pray. And I had a number of options. And when I was praying, the Lord showed me, said, you will use CGC. I really didn't know. I had ministered only once or twice in the ministry. I said, Lord, how can you use people's auditorium? And then you start. And God said, you hold on. But he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers. So I knew better. Are you following me now? And I knew which tool to engage. Not random, foolish prayer pointless arrow you have ak-47 you're just shooting everywhere you need to direct with target that's what many believers are doing we just pray but we do not know the bible says through wise counsel make war you can you can minimize wasting bullets many people just pray everywhere and say break to wherever you are let him meet you calm down you can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly i began to pray because i knew that all I needed was a destiny. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story. God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging. Begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See... There's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph the Bible says and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it and Joseph answered Pharaoh and said it is not in me God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace hallelujah and then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his honor. They don't even honor it. But he can step into another place. Your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored always hallelujah 32 and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass look at the ease at which joseph was interpreting this dream and the magicians were all watching god orchestrated an event where all the all the senate members of egypt were gathered and they were listening see listen whenever god begins to prepare a table before you learn to discern from the spirit because he will be taking you to a place you never dreamt of he'll lead me and guide me to the city up above he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny I know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above 
Lord, you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh seek out a man. He didn't know he was talking about himself. Desperate and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities. Just jump verse 39. This is where a man's breakthrough comes. After 12 years of misery, being transported into his destiny by people he did not like, facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lift in 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Immediately, without prayer, without fasting, help me read verse 41 to read. And thou shalt be over my house. No interview. No meeting with any council member. Kings did not make stupid decisions. They met with their wise men. But the king announced. He vetoed it. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word. Shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Five minutes ago, a prisoner. Five minutes later, the prime minister. My God, how can you explain this? The people who shaved him say so we were shaving the prime minister. The people who dressed him. And imagine Pharaoh who took him to the prison. I mean Potiphar. Now he had become Lord. Imagine what Potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what god has given you he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above. Your mother has a large poultry farm. There is a major hotel that is being constructed. One manifestation of destiny helpers at a recommendation. They can begin to say, Madam, begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel lives. See, friends, every man I know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at Jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of Jesus did you know the Bible says, I don't know if I should read it. Alright, let's read it. Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2. Verse 25. Luke 2 verse 25. This is the story of Jesus. Are you there? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a righteous and devoted man, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. Hold on. Look up this guy called Simeon hallelujah the Bible says God told him he would not see death his job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of Jesus before he would die are you seeing 
We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84 that Jesus will, that that what has been prophesied let me tell you if there were no people to pray they would have killed Jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities they would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind destiny help us we don't honor them the Bible never talks about Simeon again the Bible never talks about Anna again are you following me please destiny help us at the death of Jesus the Bible says listen that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much, and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength. And what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, These were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water. But they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says that when Jesus died, there was another strange rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tomb because the prophets had, been, had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So God had led one man to buy a grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said go and tell the man the master had need. At once he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth. They silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life. The Bible talked about the wise men once. They didn't tell us anything about them again. It talked about the shepherds. They didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. It was the rich man that used his influence and went and said, give me the body of this man, let me bury. If not, they would have left Jesus to hang on the cross there. Are you listening to me? Now we don't follow up these stories very well. And they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there. Look at all the people that played roles in the life of Jesus Christ. Moses, 
another man. The Bible says when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket and pushed him? How can a mother? That was a sign of desperation. She said, let me just push him. Oh God, guide him. Suddenly, the water started leading Moses to a place. For no reason, Pharaoh's daughter just said, I'm not taking my bath. Don't they have bathrooms here? I will go to the stream. This stream. At the exact point where the baby was coming, that was when she was bathing. And the Bible says she had the sound of a child. She would have said, go and kill him. When she saw it, she started laughing. Her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now, Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother, a Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got and then the maid of the mother came and suggested, say, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother to come and be a nanny for her own son and they paid her for it. Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up. He ate well. He was nourished. No joint this. No nonsense because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. Have you been taking note of certain people? Many of us have been cheated. Because we have neglected these strange sets of people. We live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of God. Could it be that after the prophecy from the men of God, there are ordinary people? Some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever. Are you getting blessed? The Bible tells us that a man called Saul was persecuting Christians everywhere and having met with God with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus he said he should go to the house of who? Judas and stay there who is that Judas? we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he stayed there three days and then they sent a man called Ananias we heard about him once didn't hear about him again and Ananias came and said brother Saul Jesus whom you saw sent me that I should lay my hands upon you that you should be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive your sight when that happened he went away the Bible says a certain time came they met one prophet called Agabus he came out from wherever we don't know a man called Agabus all his daughters were prophets and he gave a prophecy hallelujah You read all through the Bible and see several people. Ruth and Naomi haven't lost her husband, haven't lost everything. The Bible says that Ruth told Naomi, say, my God will be your God. and my, Your God will be my God, your people, my people. The Bible says while they stood, a man just came out from wherever called Boaz and he told the people we don't know who those people are he said as you glean leave some of the food their names were not mentioned just leave some food so that she can go and take care brothers and sisters if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life listen to me you may never arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you. There are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there. Someone can just tell you, come, come with us. Hallelujah. Let's go for fellowship somewhere. Pastor um, Femi, stand up. Just go and stand there. 
and God will orchestrate it in a way please sit down make yourself very comfortable hallelujah praise God now this lady sits down she has been praying for a life partner if you have not been praying about it you better start praying she has been praying oh God a godly man a man who loves and fears you and what happens we cannot even find a friend again who invited her and she sat down and while she sat down Sam is worshipping now listen come Sam Sam gets up and Sam is lifting his hands as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory what happens while Sam is moving left and right doing the business of the father suddenly Sam finds out that he's been drawn to this role Sam will move this way and Sam will be drawn and then a preacher like me will say talk to your neighbor and says your time to be blessed and Sam turns and says your time to be blessed and the Holy Ghost will say did you hear what you said hallelujah a few years after they are happily married and when you ask them what happened they say someone that's what they say someone the someone may be in the congregation but may not even know that he or she was the person who made this happen are you listening to me destiny help us many people have missed out every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you because some of them may not even be christians somebody can just come drunk with beer it may even be your loved one and for the first time you will say something sensible in years you say ah you didn't go for fellowship this night then he will hiss and go back and God will say, oh, your address. As you are coming in, that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder, oh God, why are you not changing my story? Hallelujah. This is very important. I have seen this happen in my life. When God showed me that this would be the venue. How it was going to happen, I knew. Listen, the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life. Don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says, take. Men, men have been God's instrument of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011, we have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this same Zaria, destiny help us. It's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men are you listening to me many of us have pushed our destiny helpers away either because they do not carry forms that's the problem we have with people who segregate people we are not the rich ones we are the ones who our fathers are senators what is your father capital leave this place we are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP 1.5? Get out of here. Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. 
leave this place. When you begin to treat people that way, get set for a rude shock in life because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them. You must have a discerning grace to look beyond them. Some of them may be visitors. Every time they come to your house, you know they are coming to collect your father's money, but maybe that day, maybe that day, that day, it could be some gatekeepers in your house. Every time you look at them, Adamu, Adamu, how I say, well done, man. how are you? You are insulting the man. One day he will look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her, for a job interview in all sincerity she did not have any money the mom did not have money there and it was her neighbor who was a gate man she begged him it took a lot of humility for her to beg him the guy said give me my money i said make sure you give me and i think he gave her was it 500 or 200 she transported herself got that job when she got the job they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first where they would take her are you listening to me gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house this is true life story hallelujah all that lady that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man the gate man was resting little did he know his breakthrough was coming she just gave him a bike he left the work immediately immediately many of you in life listen to me this is a powerful message many of you in life have neglected certain people you may stand and look at this brother and just say kite i beg jerry many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them you need to stop that demonic attitude the day i don't need anything from you you are not my friend again the day necessity brings it suddenly ah pastor femi we need venue you are his friend if that is your attitude you will miss out on many prophetic you can see someone the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice thank god for the ten thousand naira one your father bought for you the person may not have what you have but he has a he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere every prayer point every prayer point i tell you if you are praying for a job that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold one note can change a man's destiny activating breakthroughs through the ministry of destiny help us could this be why some of us are where we are today could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are the gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says don't tell him that i'm around could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever we are going to be praying hallelujah we are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny help us that we have allowed to slip to our hands we are going to be praying for sensitivity many of you treat everybody bad you treat people rude you are hostile you talk to people you say that's how i am because you feel you have your world met together a day will come you will find out that what you have you don't have access to a king and it is god that will connect you there hallelujah today by the grace of god many places where i go and minister i don't know those who told them about me they just said we heard about you who were the people who popped the bible said it was noised abroad that jesus was in town we do not know i only will pray for those people in my secret place that god will bless and honor them you may never know never know sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account we don't even know the people could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day are you listening to me see I am convinced that it does not cost God a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family. 
I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, just a, a, a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see him. For hours, they were just in. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, golf. The man laughed. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day, she'll come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people who were healed in Koinonia here. We still do not know who brought them. Someone referred them on the road. Told them, do this, do that. And they came and they got healed. I made up my mind never to. That's why I treat people with love and honor and respect. You don't know who. It could be a little girl like this, my sister. She may just look at you and pray a prayer for you. And say, God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say, bless you. Suddenly, you see every door opening and you are like, what in the world is going on? Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Sometimes God can lead you to a meeting. You don't know the name of the ministry. You don't know the name of the man of God. You don't know the name of anybody. You don't know the ushers that brought you. All you know is that one word was declared. You carried that word. You went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny helpers to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer grace to pray like never before number two a heart to give suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have number three demonic confrontations that attempt to discourage you number four they begin to come destiny help us they come as phone calls they come as friends they come as enemies they come as unprofitable situations they come as hostile different things hallelujah i'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor final year student some years ago he had a very serious issue with the supervisor and the supervisor would not even look at him and somehow somehow people began to mediate another lecturer was mediating and when he finally got to call the guy in they began to talk after insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing he said where are you from and that was where a conversation started and they wouldn't end that conversation till after three hours that guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired that that student had ways he knew his father could help out and so on and so forth he was actually a property the man the lecturer wanted to sell and then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent they exchanged numbers there and that man's life changed who have you been neglecting god is asking you a question don't look at your neighbor who have you been neglecting because they may not speak english like you because they may not they are not charismatic as you. Who have you been neglecting? Because they don't belong to your church. Or they don't come for koinonia. Or because they are not Pentecostals. Huh? Because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You know there's this rubbish 
association of religious things that go on we are the ones who pray we are the ones who fast we are the ones who we are the ones who know god god will always use the most unlikely means never forget this message could it be that your destiny helper is here in koinonia sitting close to you hallelujah when my younger brother was very small he drank paint one day took a cup of paint and drank it and he fell down there and fainted created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter they took him to the hospital but that was an opportunity because people came to greet hallelujah and there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him they came to greet my brother and finally some opportunities was trusting God for came by I'm teaching you wisdom tonight many of you will need to call your parents and tell them you stop insulting everybody that comes it doesn't matter what they have done God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny. There are some of you here. There are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with. You swear and say till Jesus comes. Because of what you did to my mother. Because of what you did to my father. They gave us 130,000 to share. My, my, young, my elder brother gave me 2K. And when may God punish you for as long as I live. Calm down. Do you know that one day a door can be opened? I pray every time and I tell God there are destiny partners that are attached, destiny helpers attached to this ministry. There are destiny helpers attached to my life. There are destiny helpers attached to your life. Once again, let me use this last example and we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You? My brother? Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you. It could be a carryover cause you are praying. And saying oh God but they can wave this thing. And you have done everything you know to do. One day God can just send someone and they will be discussing about you in the office. And they will say please help this person. He has tried the distance between you is a destiny helper and I'm telling you it can be seconds away it can be minutes away only learn to recognize destiny helpers they will come in forms that you will not appreciate them after the grace here there are people who come and just look there are some people who just send me text messages with one scripture jokingly they did not even know I don't know them, I don't have their numbers. But that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me. Destiny help us. We are going to cry unto God. Are you ready to pray? God bless you. Rise up on your feet. Say the distance between me. Say it as loud as you can. The distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away prayer point number one you are going to cry unto god and say lord i i repent of people i have neglected i, I want you to really pray and say people i have kicked out of my life destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now lift your voice and pray kapo shatala kapanarara kam pratakatala kotosia people who would have given me relevant information those who would have connected me with helpers lift your voice and pray some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help kapras katala kaposo tabaya Bambra takatele kosota, bakarie ketai, wine pressers, bakers, men who can take you to the king. It's not as hard as it seems. I am convinced 
is a destiny help by way no matter what you need financial breakthrough a miracle a prophetic word direction in your life say lord i repent for neglecting destiny help us i've let them come and pass i refuse to activate defining moments in my life pray on behalf of your family <laughs> say lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and i want you to pray this with all your heart he said i will restore to you you're going to pray and say lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle i missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity lift your voice say lord let the helpers come again lord let financial helpers come lord let marital helpers come lift your voice and pray lord let academic help us come the distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser is your wine baker it's not hard is there anything too hard for god to do i'm telling you in one day god can change your story in one day god can change the story of your family members restore pray restore for my family restore oh god opportunities that have been lost opportunities send them again oh god help us of destiny send them again reactivate breakthrough reactivate breakthrough hallelujah Let me tell you a little story i have a friend listen to me i have a friend in abuja this guy went to abuja a poor broke person with nothing but his faith hallelujah and this guy had been praying and said lord change my story help me this guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said i wanted to involve you because god asked me to bless you and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of buy some plots of land 720 million 720 million and 10 percent goes to the agents so they brought him this guy became a millionaire overnight he didn't do anything they just brought him and counted the number of people the 10 percent agency fee was what changed his life yet there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in abuja since 1990 since 1999 praying and running with complimentary cards this guy was wearing palms he wasn't wearing a suit palms and his life changed overnight brothers and sisters if you ever forget anything this night remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man it takes god who is the father of spirits to connect the lines and that's going to be our next prayer point you're going to say lord by the instrument of the prophetic i call forth they 
that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying Lord prophetically pray those who will open doors of jobs doors of marriages doors of ministry doors of anointings doors of favor doors of lifting doors of success doors of increase doors of breakthrough make sure you are praying pray it with all your heart your family story can change you have been praying and fasting could this be the message could this be the message pray say lord whether in lagos or abuja or kano or Zamfara, the united states the caribbean by the prophetic power of the spirit let there be a connection orchestrate a meeting let there be a meeting pray pray god wants to take you from this level to another it's a year of supernatural exploits exploits by the spirit your story can change activate defining moments activate breakthrough in your life come on prophesy i call them they are coming into my life from the north the east the south i pray for e and i destiny help us are coming we receive them we receive them we receive them we receive them hallelujah let me give you one little story look at me when professor madi was the vice chancellor of amadu Bello university many of you did not meet him there was a gentleman who did very well but he did not get admission hallelujah and the guy just went for reasons he could not explain he went and sat down near the senate in the night and professor madi had the culture of walking into students hostels walking around just to see what is going on and when he walked he saw the gentleman and he called him he said why are you sitting down here he said sir look at my wire result look at everything but my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission. He said, you are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, they had printed his, admi his admission letter. This is true. It's a confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not beat. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him. When they called him, they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered. Do you know? true life story when they, this guy was uh, maybe around 1.7 something by the time they corrected everything he was supposed to be in 2-1 in all sincerity my cousin my cousin was a student in this school my cousin was a student in this school he wrote a major exam that he got A and when the result came out they gave him F this guy they didn't know he knew that he had, he had read but you see, sometimes, even when you have the evidence, you don't have access to the king. There are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time, but that access to the king. Hallelujah. And one day God raised a visiting prof who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone.
a house to complete for your loved ones to go to school let me tell you no matter what it is expand your mind tonight there are men who are carriers of miracles they don't even know there are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs they have been suffering you know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job they are praying they are applying cv after cv if it is destiny help us they will accelerate your path you will jump protocols we are going to pray say lord i receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life lift up your voice and pray it takes discernment it takes discernment it takes discernment say lord let me discern they may not be my tribe they may not be my friends they may be the enemies of our family but lord grace to discern when you are about to use them to change our story Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you're going to pray and speak over your life and tell yourself you are breaking through and breaking forth on the left and right. Don't keep quiet, please. Don't keep quiet. Prophesy. I break through from the left, the right, the east, the west. Oh, hallelujah. I activate breakthroughs. I establish it in the name of Jesus by the spirit of prayer. I contend against every power of darkness. Come on, pray. Pray against every satanic force. Pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough God wants you to smile God wants you to smile God wants you to smile He wants to encourage you He wants your life to be fruitful Satan get lost Be lifted all ye gates Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs I prophesy breakthroughs breakthroughs breakthrough financial breakthrough marital breakthrough family breakthrough academic breakthrough spiritual breakthrough breakthrough in your job let your family members smile I provoke it from the realm of the spirit I provoke it from the heavens I activate the angelic I activate the angelic let angels begin to move to every family let angels begin to move over your academic angels move over your finances angels move over your family angels move I activate the operation of angels content with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for God's people let the angelic contend with the powers that delay that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough I release breakthroughs I release breakthroughs I release breakthrough I speak it in your life I send an anointing into your life a breaker anointing a breakthrough anointing I send it into your life I send it into your academics I send it into your family I send it into your finances those you do not know I cause them to arise and help you I cause them to arise and help you hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands everybody everywhere your gift is needed I command them to begin to talk about you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I activate breakthrough for you in the name of Jesus 
everywhere your gift is needed whoever needs your gift in nigeria i stand as a servant of god i command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight 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 in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray for every one of your family members looking for a job my god and my king tonight let testimonies rise from this message no matter how long tonight let someone talk to somebody talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of jesus for your family members i command help us those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities yes they don't merit it but by the power of destiny help us i connect them to the breakthrough for the next level in the name of jesus where you have cried academically i connect you to help us professors who will help you admin staffs who will help you admin staff who will help you members in the senate who will help you whether for accommodation whether for your result whether for missing script whether for your wayek whatever it is in the name of jesus as the senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come i prophesy it i release it to you in the name of jesus I release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight i command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the street they will come to your homes in the name of jesus you will see them in your dreams god will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected christ i pray let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus we command supernatural marital connections in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we bind every devil we bind every power that attempts to cause delay we set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage be released in the name of jesus I I'm calling you higher, say the Spirit of God. 
I'm calling you climb up that mountain say at the spirit of God climb up that mountain where your eyes will see clearer climb up that mountain climb up that mountain feast upon the secrets of the spirit feast upon the secrets of the spirit say the Lord feast upon the secrets of the spirit There is a path that no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Majestic is his presence. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 2 verse 8. First Thessalonians 2. I'm sorry, not eight. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, I would have come to you. It is my desire. For you to experience my presence. He said, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that blessing would have come to you. Wherefore, that healing, that breakthrough would have come to you. He said, I desire, but Satan hindered us. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We will pray. Wherefore, I would have brought the breakthrough for the family. Wherefore, I would have opened you up to certain realms of grace and power. He said, but Satan, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that genotype would have changed by now. Wherefore, that act of witchcraft and divination over families and territories would have been addressed. He said, but Satan hindered us. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is hidden in laws and mysteries. And all through scriptures, you will find the operation of the kingdom hidden in stories, experiences, parables. They are a revelation of the patterns, the workings of the kingdom. It takes illumination. It's called the spirit of revelation. And then your eyes are open to see beyond the story. And then you begin to see the construction. The build up, the character and the operation of the kingdom. And when you understand it. You have those keys. Then you will command power in this territory. And this is what we seek to transfer. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom week after week this is our project to unveil unto you the secrets of the kingdom because when you find it then you will be able to operate in mastery in the last one or two months we have been unveiling a lot of things opening you up to the spiritual dimension of life all of the teachings have been a build up upon one and another to open you up to the spiritual dimension the bible says they know not neither do they understand 
they grope in darkness confusion and as a result the earth is out of course have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes and the remedy is an unveiling this is why we value the presence of the holy spirit so much the body of christ knows a lot they know a lot of bible stories but insight into the truth to understand the operation of the kingdom is what is deficient it says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Keep them in the midst of the heart. He said they are life to those who find them. Health to their flesh. It will take your understanding of spiritual things. It is understanding that will reduce Satan to become nothing in your life. Hallelujah. Wherefore we would have come to you. So there are many things that desire to come into your life. Breakthrough. Blessings. Increase. He said, but what happened? Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Hindered the blessing. Hindered the lifting. Hindered your insight. Access into the deep things of the spirit. But Satan hindered us. Hallelujah. And tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. We have come to open up the two lead gates. That you will step into certain things that have a time been given. Please take note of what is happening tonight. There are healings already happening. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying. This night we will be confronting the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight we will pursue. We will overtake. And we will recover all. Many people have taught all kinds of junk messages. Look at me. Wickedness is real. Don't let anybody fool you with any sugar-coated message. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. Why do you need the power of the Holy Ghost? Because there are giants on every mountain. And the Bible says, how awe inspiring are your ways. It said, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 66 verse 3. Wherefore, by now you would have been lifted. By now your family would have risen to a level you would have stepped into another dimension but satan hindered us wherefore you would have been walking in mighty levels of grace by now your destiny helpers have desired to come to you but satan hindered them wherefore your life partner would have come into your life you would have been happily married with dignity and honor, but Satan hindered them. Wherefore, that job, that opening, but Satan hindered us. This is Paul the Apostle speaking. I desire to come to you. I know the things I carry, and I know that if I meet you, you will never be the same. So, Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been coming to, for koinonia years ago, but Satan hindered you. Wherefore, your loved ones would have been here tonight with all your efforts to bring them, but Satan hindered them. I need you to know that Satan is determined to frustrate your Christian experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is determined. He will use every spiritual arsenal within his control to see that he frustrates your spiritual life. 
Therefore, it will take understanding of the operations of the kingdom to triumph over him. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. He said, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, he's restoring everything in obedience to Christ. Satan has hindered a lot of people. Listen, we have been explaining these things right from the teaching, give me this mountain. That every time you arrive at that mountain, there are giants. Hear me? There are forces of darkness stationed across the earth to ensure that men do not rise. Zechariah chapter 1. This is a month of breakthrough. Something must happen in your life. I know that somebody believes this word. There are many who will sit down there and keep being cynical and watch others testify. Said they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Zechariah 1 from verse 17 down. cry yet saying thus said the lord of hosts my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and the lord shall yet comfort zion the moment he it speaks about breakthrough what happens next verse can you give us from amplified is it possible please amplified then i lifted up my eyes and behold four horns Immediately he told the prophet, this is your prophetic destiny. This is what should happen to you. He said, now lift up your eyes and see what has been hindering you. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I beheld four horns. Amplified says, symbols of strength. Next verse. And I said unto the angel who talked with me, what are these? I've not been taught in church that there are horns that can lift people. They have deceived me that you just confess and enter your destiny. This is strange. I've not been taught. What are these? Many of, of you have been deceived that all it takes is just to laugh and you just jump in and enter your destiny. All it takes is to just pack five naira and put an envelope and come and drop it. Or that they pour a little dot of oil. Let me tell you the truth. There is more to the operation of the kingdom than this. He said, what are these? It is strange. I've not been taught. I've no, I wasn't given this insight that after a promise, there is a contention in the spirit to bring its deliverance. Most people just stop in verse 17. He said, now that I've told you your prophetic destiny, lift your eyes, let's tackle the resistance. What is this that you see? If it's raining, let them come in. Please come in. Sit anywhere. On the ground, on the altar, anywhere. Just find a place and sit down. Tonight is a serious meeting and we are going to pray. Listen. And he answered me. He said, these are what? The four horns of powers which have scattered Judas. Rob men of their praise. Rob men of their testimony. Judah means praise. Praise is an effect of a testimony. The well doing of the Lord. Please come in. Come in everybody. Sit down anywhere. Come and sit here. Wherever you can find, just sit down. There are spaces all around. Ushers, please help them. I need everybody's attention. Are you following me now? He said they have scattered what? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Tonight we will pray. Oh, that devil that is holding your destiny. See, no matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. Is that true? No matter how mad he is, he can do stupid things and they say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, the Bible says he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Look up. 
every promise in the Bible requires contentions in the spirit for you to actualize it. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been released to you. There are more seats. Stand anywhere. No devil will stop you this night. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Sing one more time. Yeah. Let hope let it rise. Darkness in your Hallelujah. Verse 20. Please follow me tonight. It says, then the Lord showed me what? Four smiths or workmen. One for each enemy of the horn. He showed me four carpenters. He said, now I've shown you the horn. There are certain people I am going to send to you. He calls them carpenters. This is your promise. This is your destiny. Between you and your destiny, there are four horns. And the job of those horns is to scatter your life, scatter your finances, scatter your anointing, scatter your prayer life. He said, but I sent four carpenters. One for each horn. He said to beat it down, 21. Then said I, what are these horns or smith? So Satan sends his horn. See, let me tell you something. Go to verse 19. He said, these are four horns and four powers. Their job is to wreck your destiny. Are you listening to me? They are, they are patient. These are spirit entities scattered around the face of the earth. And every time they see anything that looks like growth and progress in your family, they are the ones, they watch to see when your sister gets pregnant. Their job is to scatter. He said to scatter Judah. Judah is the place of praise. Israel is the place of promise. 21. Then said I, what are these horns coming to do? He says, and he said, these are the horns or powers that scattered Judah so that what? No man will lift his head. There are forces. Hear me, Koinonia. There are forces of darkness positioned by the powers of darkness. He said, wherefore, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. So that no man will lift up his head. They are scattered around our villages. They are scattered around ministries so that certain ministries cannot lift up their heads. So that certain destinies cannot lift up their heads. That's the job. Every time anyone in your family is about to rise, they contend in your academics, in your finance. The moment you begin to pray, after one week your prayer life dies. The horn. The moment you have faith and say, Lord, I trust you. After three days, something pushes you down. Are you following me now? You enter a relationship. Two weeks, something just happens and scatters everything. Who are these? He said, these are four horns. They have been stationed. And every time they see you lifting your head, their job is to bring you down. It's in your Bible. It says, so that no man will lift up his head. Many ministries do not know the powers of darkness that try to tie them down. Are you listening to me? The moment a ministry starts blossoming, the men of God are carried away with money and prosperity and increase and ministrations. They forget that there are four horns. Let the Lord just declare a prophecy over your life. And you will see these horns rise. The 
the moment they declared this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased all hell broke loose he said I desire to give you prosperity I desire to give you increase but there are four homes there are four homes there are many families represented here what you are seeing in your dreams and visions and what is happening in your life is different between that dream and the manifestation are four horns they are gates are you following me tonight i came to preach my heart because we are going to pray four horns you go you go and apply for a job they are ready to respond to you three days later something comes up without any explanation see hear me believers if you don't take charge of your destiny and apply the keys of the kingdom you may remain forever and you will not lift up your hands thank you for lifting 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 my head Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. There are many ministers who struggle and struggle. They preach, they suffer, they go and do a lot of publicity. People come and get healed and go. They don't, these are four horns. The moment they pay your father's salary everybody in the family starts becoming mysteriously sick without explanation until that one night I finish you marry a man who was loving and caring suddenly he becomes a Dracula four horns tonight we have come under an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere to confront the gates of darkness are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me tell you, Satan can bow. Are you hearing me? Satan can bow. You must get angry in your spirit. Don't just sit and watching others. Forget about what is happening and concentrate. There's no space. Sit around. Find somewhere and sit. Tonight, when it's time to pray, I don't want to see you looking at me. Pack your wig, pack your wivon, keep it one side. We are going to pray this night. Hallelujah. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to what? There are men that have been anointed to terrorize this horn. Are you saying that word? He said, see, he said, but these smiths, these carpenters have come to terrorize the horn. He didn't say, it's not just to defeat them. To terrorize them there are people satan is afraid of see pastor jakes made a statement look at me let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is this error in the body there are two errors one is the error of saying see everybody i have the same access to god are you hearing me i have the same access to god there is nothing there. No man of God is special and this. Or the one that men of God make themselves semi-gods. Both are wrong. But let me tell you something clearly this night. Not every human being is a human being. The anointing has changed some people. The Bible says there are many bodies. Some are terrestrial. Some are celestial. They may look like you. The ability to recognize that difference is what will take you out of certain things. Are you hearing me? We are equal in Christ, but we are not equal in call and office and anointing. You must realize this. The Bible says there are some people that have been anointed to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken. Look at the horns that are terrorizing others. But the Bible says God calls some people and says, You, I just call you, come and become a terrorist. It's an election of grace. It's in your Bible. This is not error. It's not because they pray more. It is an office. It's an office. 
to terrorize the works of darkness. See, let me tell you this night. Whatever power, hear me. I'm speaking under the unction of the Lord. Whatever power that is responsible for holding any area of your life, except God is not the God of heaven, it must give up on you this night. I said it must give up on you this night. I don't care. I speak under a prophetic and apostolic unction as one of these privileged carpenters. If I be sent of God, I speak to you. Every horn that is responsible for terrorizing your life, it will bow this night. He said, but I have sent carpenters. They are around, scattered over the earth. The only problem is that we have not trained our spirits to recognize them. Jesus went to certain cities. They saw him until he ascended to heaven. And they said, is this the man that has been among us? See, let me tell you, one of the greatest revelations you have in this life is that some people have been called. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's called an election of grace. I didn't call myself. See, let me tell you something. When the Lord showed me the vision for ministry, hear me. I was standing in a tower and I saw an endless sea of people. Very oppressed people. Messed up by Satan. It was a whole generation of people. And I saw them crying. And while they came close, I was hearing the sounds of their cry. And they were blaming me in the vision. And I said, what is wrong? And they said, there is no food and no water. Suddenly, it occurred to me that I was holding in my hands the keys to the storehouse that will feed that generation. This is a vision I had. Listen to me, please. Hallelujah. And when that happened, I told them who is the cause who is the reason why you are the way you are and they said you are the one suddenly compassion fell on me and I said I'm going to come out right now I, I got to that tower I was trying to hide from somebody that was when I looked through the mirror and I saw that thing it was fear and timidity that made me to run like Gideon to go and hide in the vision but the people were telling me that we are dying here and you are the one who is holding the keys to the storehouse they said no food and no water these two things hallelujah and i was determined that i was going to go out the moment i opened the door because i was afraid that i was alone when i opened the door there was a giant person that stood and he said hold my hands we will go together He's called the Holy Spirit. This is the whole idea behind the things we do with the Holy Spirit. People have criticized that we are emphasizing the... See, let me tell you, every great vision comes under fire and criticism because people do not understand. The Bible says they know not. I'm taking time to explain to you. This call, there are people who have been called as carpenters. You may die in a place without recognizing because you see everybody and you think they are celestial or they are terrestrial. There are some people that certain graces have elected them. Hallelujah. In one other vision, I was in a whole city and I found out that all the hospitals and the clinics were closed. And I was crying because there were people that were sick. I said, what is all this? What is going on here? And I had a voice. He said, go and heal them. That was the end. So when people hear that HIV positive is changing to negative, or when people hear that genotypes are changing, rather than finding out, they keep criticizing and castigating. We don't announce any miracle here without verification. He said... But these smiths or these workmen 
have been sent to terrorize these homes. That's why their lives are not normal. They are not normal human beings. They don't live like normal human beings. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know the burden of carrying a prophetic agenda for a generation. It will change you. I don't have a social life. I have lost many things that many people have. You do not know what it means to come under the influence of a divine mandate. I see a lot of people jumping and smiling. I'm apostle, I'm prophet. I want to open ministry and I say, oh dear. Day and night you are under fire of all sorts. But he that endures to the end. Hallelujah. He said to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns, brothers and sisters, that are responsible for the way your father behaves, for the way your mother behaves, for the way your loved ones behave. You have tried counseling. You have tried psychology. It didn't work. They are called horns. But the Bible says, My head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. prato soto balakata. Are you there? What did I say? 16, I'm sorry. 16, verse 9. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. One to read it again. For a great door and effectual is opened up to me. And there are many, a great door is opened. The door of marriage has been opened. The door of healing has been opened. He said, but there are how many? But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut it. And there are carpenters that have been sent to enforce that thing. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. We are not the only carpenters. You are here because you are one of those carpenters too. This is our mission. Our mission is not to become great men of God, but to make you a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness. See, it is not everyone, hear me, that is afraid of Satan. Are you hearing me? It's not everyone that is afraid of death. It's not everyone that is afraid of sickness. Some people have seen how cheap Satan is and he's aware. Hallelujah. That knowledge comes through an understanding of the operation of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are many people who do not know. Listen, I want to tell you something. If you do not know the laws that govern the kingdom, it can be costly. Are you hearing me? Longevity is not a mistake. Longevity is not a product of going to church. There are kingdom principles that bring forth longevity. Divine health is not a mistake. Divine health is not a product of the anointing. Divine health is from the body of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Anointing comes to get away the demon spirits that are responsible for bringing that. He said by his stripes. He didn't say by the oil. We have misapplied a lot of spiritual laws. Authority against witches and wizards is not the issue of uh -uh. there are kingdom principles and this is what we seek to share. 
greatness does not happen by magic. Many of you are asking, why is the devil disturbing me? Are you still asking that question? When Satan followed Jesus to the wilderness, was patient for one month and ten days until Jesus finished fasting. What makes you think that the devil will just look at you and say, oh, I understand you are anointed. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to look at the devil eyeball to eyeball and say, I am one of those carpenters. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some of you who don't sleep. When you close your eyes, you are oppressed. I was one of those people. The Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. I've come to speak to you that there is an authority. There are seven things that redemption brings unto men. All of them must be at work in your life. The Bible says, worthy is the lamb to receive blessings, riches, honor. These are all the things he has received and he has given you. Seven. And it must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. Who are these horns? Who are these horns that have stood against little children? Who are these horns? You are aware of the testimony of the man who came here and who was healed, I think during one of the services or thereabout. He was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him in a dream. Remember the story? With big syringe, injected this man with HIV virus and he woke up physically with the virus. That devil is a liar on now years ago I used to pray for barren people and they were not healed they didn't give birth it disturbed me and I went back I said Lord what, what is it then the Lord told me barrenness is not sickness it's an oppression it doesn't require healing there is a spirit the spirits come and they create what we call fibroid fibroid is the baby of these spirits in the womb of people. That's why women have miscarriages in the night. Why don't they have miscarriages in the daytime? But you are carpenters. See, I look forward to testimonies. Where will he, somebody will say, Ah, I heal the sick and I raise the dead. Not Pastor Jakes did this. Uh -uh. You be the carpenters. You are not falling down for nothing. You are not falling down to prove we are anointed. God is in a serious business of working on you. Say I'm one of the carpenters. Say it, I'm one of the carpenters. Yes, financial carpenters. Apostolic carpenters. One of my life's goals is to break the back of poverty in the church is one of it i hate the effect of poverty on many families more ladies have entered prostitution they didn't come to meet you how much do you have many people have been messed up there are some of you now you want to marry or you cannot get married because of the finance and some of you are hoping that one day I will get a job of 10,000 and then I will get married calculate it by your do you to judge but when those that God has sent to bless you they can come in one day he said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this? You are going to get angry this night. This night we are going to pray. I'm just sharing with you scriptures. The Bible says, Daniel, in chapter 10. Remember how that Daniel was praying and fasting. Wanting to get an understanding. And the Bible says the moment is there from the very first day. Daniel 10. 
We start reading from verse 5 down to 11 verse 1. When he was coming, the Bible says the prince of Persia withstood the angel 20 and one day. The prince of Persia withstood him. Hallelujah. The prince of Persia withstood him. Until he kept praying. The moment that embargo was lifted, the angel said, now I am come to give thee understanding. One of the chief princes came to help. Tonight there is divine backing of the angelic. As we pray, there will be things happening in the realm of the spirit. Yokes of darkness. I will be broken. This is pre-miracle service. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. That's what God will do tonight. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. I've shared it here. Before we start Koinonia, listen, I realize. That there is a secret to increase and growth. And I knew that there were powers over territory that kept ministries down. I've shared this again. From the roundabout of Chicken Republic, I started walking there till aviation, commanding the forces to bow, commanding principalities and power. And then the city opens up. Before I go for administration in any city, I speak to the principalities. They know my voice. See, let me teach you something. There are principalities. There are powers. There are rulers. There are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are different strata of, of darkness. But the Bible says you have been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Both in this realm this world and in the world to come so you command them to bow hallelujah as our prayer department begins to pray they speak over the week and an open heavens and you are there in your house you don't even know what carries you from your house you are still complaining and insulting us yet you are coming because the heavens are open there's an army rising up you are that prophetic army. There's an army rising up. I tell you, you are that army. There's an army rising up. Tonight, every one of you is going to represent not just yourself, but even your families. Hear me? Your families have been praying for a savior. Say, we can't die like this. And God said, come for koinonia. You, you, let God find a carpenter. Hallelujah. I just came, today I just came, I've been at home. I needed to go and visit the house. As soon as I stepped in, in the night, that night as I slept, 
in a dream the lord showed me everything that was wrong and i got up the next day while they were sleeping hallelujah i got anointing oil poured it inside water and carried the bucket i took my bare foot and i was walking around and i was commanding the forces in that territory to bow i said an ambassador is in town this is what we are teaching you hallelujah an ambassador is in town i went and looked at my mother's poultry i said i command increase see if you know the office that you stand in in christ you will not take it for granted the bible says as i hear you say before my ears so will i do realize you are not ordinary you are not the one looking for help and if there is any need for help we will grant you the help here by the grace of god and empower you to go back when you see things that are not working rejoice because you are here you carry the backing of heaven your job is to legislate your job is to legislate the bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers hallelujah praise the lord an ambassador you must realize this so that you don't just stand at home or in your offices everything that is going wrong start blaming yourself and say now everybody's lamenting if there is nobody i am an ambassador say it i'm an ambassador an ambassador this is why god is bringing you and you are going to pray as you pray first for yourself and then through the fire of the holy ghost you will dislodge powers over your life and then you will see testimonies rolling in suddenly you will find out that certain insights you have been struggling to get suddenly there is an open heaven your ministry or your fellowship takes another level as if satan does not exist hallelujah nobody ever came to jesus christ hear me after he went 40 days and 40 nights satan came to withstand him because jesus wanted to come to the people like paul but satan withstood him when he defeated satan suddenly on the mountain people started coming along the water side people said, what happened powers were dislodged this night hear me you are not praying for healing you are confronting the gates of darkness rise up on your feet everybody rise up on your feet listen 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 I want you to know that heaven is backing you tonight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say heaven is backing me. Say it, heaven is backing me. Because we are going to pray now. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I tell you there will be an eruption of testimonies. After this night's meeting, you will know that the things that have been happening around your life and your family, they are not as ordinary as they look. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. number one hallelujah you're going to pray and say in the name of jesus i confront gates that are stopping the finances the finances grace that are making your family members not to be titers grace that are making them not to be givers lift your voice 
financial Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hold on. This prayer must be serious this night. Please let's have two of our school of ministry students, two prayer band. Benga, come. Kenny, come. Go on one of the mic. Our school of ministry students, where are you? Are you not? Tolu, come. Quickly, two, three. Well, you, it's okay. You push, go and share the mic. Stand behind. When I say pray, if you are not praying, you will go back to your seat. You are not out for jamboree. We are going to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four horns. There are four prayer points we have. The Bible says they were sent to one. This finance thing, you are going to pray it. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, my God. 
that will enter into a man's life and, and spoil the good except he first find the strong man. he said and I will give you the keys of it. hallelujah hear me many of us will be surprised what will happen this night prayer point number two you are going to declare and say Satan the Bible says through the greatness of thy power right now I command those forces bow. Lift your voice and pray. Bow. Bow. Principalities bow. Hallelujah. 
I tell you, fire is burning in this house. Fire is burning in this house. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Listen. Are you still praying? The Bible says, when you catch a thief, listen please. When a thief steals your property and you catch that thief, he won't bring back what is stole. He said he will restore sevenfold. This is what the Bible says. Sevenfold. You're going to pray. See, listen. The Lord is showing me, in, I'm in a vision right now. And the Lord is showing me angels holding baskets. Hear me? But the baskets are empty. Listen. Please follow me. There is a prophetic atmosphere here. There are empty baskets. And I'm wondering, and the Lord is ministering to me. He's saying this basket will be full of the blessings that are due God's people. See, me. He said, and I will restore. Hear me. Canker worms can eat years of people's life. So you are growing older, but nothing is happening. But this night, I don't know about you, but I came to Koinonia. I'm placing a demand. Everything hey! you know, Satan took. I like you to call it back and say, "Restore." ministered something Rest to me. On. We are still praying on the third point. Rest the Lord said, Rest we on. should call back opportunities Rest that on. were either missed or wasted. Rest are on. you hearing me? There are some of you, some circles came into your life. Rest on. Either by carelessness it passed. Let me tell you, Rest it's on. only in this realm that you count time. In the realm of the spirit, you can call time back. Hear me? I don't care what opportunity you missed. Rest on. Whether it was an opportunity for marriage, Rest on. for job, Rest right on. now, I want you to call back Rest that on. opportunity. It will come back. Yes. I'm 
Some of you are tired. Rest on. But hold on. Rest on. See, hear me. You never know how powerless Satan is until you engage in prayer. Satan will keep opening his eyes until you pray. When you pray, the devil will shrink and you will see how powerless he is. Hallelujah. Now, one last prayer point. We'll add one more. You are going to confront the gates over your family. See, don't let anybody fool you that there are no gates. Let me tell you something. Some of you are the last card that God has to use over your family. If you don't do anything about it, don't think God brought you here just to waste your time. Listen. See me. Listen, listen. If you truly love your family members, effectual prayer is not just by shouting it is the seriousness put your heart in this prayer many of you as you pray you will begin to see vision see hear me listen let me tell you something listen listen I, see we don't kill people in this place but let me tell you god is a god of mercy but he's a god of judgment are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain horns. We don't care who these horns are. Unfortunately, sometimes, as this power is taking some human beings become victims, we don't kill people. But whatever it will take for the glory of your family to rise, you will pray it is not. Lift your voice. Take a look at the 
Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says, And that night, Jacob wrestled with this. He said, I will not let you go. And the Bible says, When he touched his thigh, he said, What is your name? He said, Jacob, which means a cheat and a supplanter. He said, You are called Israel. For as a prince, you have sought with God and prevailed. And the Bible says, Hear me. He says, And the sun rose. And he called that place Peniel. Hallelujah. I've told you as much, hear me. I've told you as much as possible. Please invite your loved ones for the miracle service. You don't hear me talk like this. We are only responding to the things that the Holy Spirit, if they refuse, no problem. For God will do a work in this place. Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for this ministry. Hear me. I'm like a pregnant woman right now. Because I know when we step into seasons. God has his way. In the last three to four months. That's why you find out that you don't find me outside. I have been praying and preparing. Birthing new and mighty things in the spirit. We are stepping into a dimension. See for when you are faithful with what God gives you. He said he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to the ankle. And when he saw that you were faithful. He measured a thousand cubits. Many of you are already sensing that. There are newer levels of grace. You can see that the unction upon the house is not what it used to be. This is ushering season. For when God wants to bless you, he will first increase the anointing, then enlarge your sphere of influence. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You have taken all the praise you have made. Hallelujah. If you love this ministry, I'd like you in the next few minutes to pray your life out. Listen, you are going to pray for the ministers. See the way ministers are falling around like leaves. Immorality, all kinds of things. I've said it, any man can fall from any height. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you love us, pray for us. Pray for us. We are going to pray for this ministry. We are going to say, Lord, let a dimension of grace, hear me, hear the prayer point, and fire spread from this place and around this nation. God is already doing great things through our teachings. I cannot describe to you what is happening around the media can tell you best the mighty and terrible things that God is doing some of you have gone back and you have become mighty agents of change even you, you are surprised at yourself this is what we are training you to become and hear me when you are praying for the ministry you are praying for yourself the ministry is not Joshua Selman are you hearing what I am saying you are going to say Lord together as a family, nobody will rise and leave another. Are you hearing me? There will not be a few men of God rising, growing in grace. Hear me? There are certain things God has given us as a ministry. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The love of God. God has given us influence. God has given us prosperity. We are going to pray that the strongholds that attempt to raise their heads. Listen, there will never come a time where we will not have testimonies here. The vision must speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to command and say every force that will want to stop the vision from speaking, it will speak in your own life. It will speak. 
if truly God has called us, something should come upon your life that you will become a person of provision. Lift your voice and pray for Ian. <laughs> of the ministry our school of ministry God is raising mighty mighty men of power in all spheres not just ministry you are going to pray for our students you are going to pray for the missions hallelujah you are going to pray for koinonia you are going to pray for all of the things that we are doing you are going to say Lord not one sick body will come and not be healed not one oppressed person you're going to pray for grace to stand criticism grace to stand persecution grace to remain faithful grace to remain faithful grace to remain humble Hallelujah. I want to do something prophetic this night. Hallelujah. One of the things God has given us is the spirit of dominion. You know what dominion is? Dominion means to legislate the counsel of God in any sphere, in Satan notwithstanding. And among the many things that will happen to you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. 
that everything we stand for, your life must represent it. See, if you do not represent what we stand for, we are fake. It means we are lying. It means we are faking power somewhere. If we are healing the sick, you should heal the sick. You must not be in ministry. If we are humble and you are arrogant, there is something wrong with the transference of spirits. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe, my brothers. Believe. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please be careful with the fans. Father, you didn't send us to waste people's time. You didn't send us to be noisemakers. My God, I am praying this night. Every power, every force against any area of your life, this night, if I be sent as a servant of God, if God has ordained us as one of these carpenters, I pray right now, those powers bow. 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 Every power hindering your marriage in this place. Hear me. Or the marriage of your loved ones. This night, I release you in the name of Jesus. Everything stopping your breakthrough. Breakthrough. As surely as the God of heaven lives. Between this night and next Friday, I command unbelievable breakthrough. Receive it. Receive it. I invoke it from the heavens with the backing of Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Every close heaven in this place whether it's as a result of non titan or mistakes or whatever i don't care what is responsible every heaven that is closed in this place right now this night i pray let the heavens be open over you let the heavens be open over you let the heavens be open over you Hallelujah. This month, there are three things I'm speaking into your life now. Listen. Number one is authentic unction. Listen. Number two is favor that you cannot imagine. Listen. Number three is honor. Receive these three fold blessings. Receive it. Power, power to heal the sick, power to cast out devils. Hear me, in the name that is above all names, whatever bows to us here, let it bow to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever answers to us, let it answer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for your family. Hear me, enough is enough this night. Lift your hands. Super. Super. Your families will never believe you or the God you serve until there is an evidence. 
I pray my God that evidence of breakthrough that will compel families to know that you are at work let there be a release now let there be a release now let the angel of the Lord go across every state every city I instruct it every city Saria, Abuja, Lagos, Calabar, Kodiste, Jos, Angels, in the name of Jesus, go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Give testimonies. 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 So that they will know that your God is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is instructing me to do something dangerous. Please take off your shoes and stand on your feet. This is not diabolic, please. Don't go and start criticizing us and talking nonsense. Listen, something will come upon your life this night. Please listen. Listen. I don't do stupid things just because people are doing I don't have money. The Bible says, hear me. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given to you. I want to pray, hear me. Many of you do not know the mystery of what is happening, but I want you to believe. You will be amazed. Because I see an angel of the Lord, pure red from head to toe. Never seen, listen, I've never seen this angel of the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. That there is an impartation and a transference. Hear me? The influence we enjoy as a ministry is not a mistake. Are you hearing me? God has honored us and taken us to where we cannot merit. I want it to come upon your life this night. Lift your hands. Many of you will receive mighty impartations. Hear me. You will see things answering. See, your Christianity will have results. Father, I stand as your servant tonight. Under the instruction that you have given me. My God, there is a spirit upon this ministry. An operation of the Holy Ghost. The operation of dominion. An inexplainable influence. At the count of three. My God, let every feet upon this ground receive that anointing and demonstrate it practically. Thank you, Father. One, two, three. Receive it. Take 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 it. Receive it. The spirit of dominion. The action of kingdom influence. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the earth answer to you. Hallelujah. One more prayer. God has given us inexplainable 
kingdom wealth and prosperity please lift your hands you need it I honestly want to pray from my heart that your financial heavens will be open in a way and I'm going to pray my God and my king I pray in the name that is above all names you have called and you have sent me Lord if I be your servant at the count of three let an unction of inexplainable wealth let it come upon your people at the count of three one two three take it take it Take it! Take it! A mantle of prosperity! A mantle of wealth! A mantle of finance! Do, do mighty things for the kingdom! To feed the hungry! To clothe the poor! Wipe the tears from your family. Let this anointing bring you ideas. Let it bring you opportunities. Put back your shoes. Thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks. Yes, I see a mighty open heavens, mighty, mighty open heavens Jesus we give you thanks Jesus we give you thanks you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you again give him thanks I assure you as surely as the Lord lives your testimonies begin right now anyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in your body whether blood disease fibroid lump in your breast in the name that is above all names we change genotypes now SS be changed to AA now AS be changed to AA now migraine headaches go in the name of Jesus demonic manifestations go now in the name of Jesus lump in the breast disappear now appendicitis go now every kind of infirmity if it has a name I command it to bow now you will return with testimonies HIV be healed now every dead virus every virus that brings death in your body I curse it, it dies now hepatitis A, B and C go forever now hallelujah Praise the Lord. Hear me. I want to give some people an opportunity right now to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. The number one vision that we have, please keep standing. Don't sit down yet. Please, please. I know you've tried. We need to make this great call. The Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmaments of the heavens. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. I want to give you an opportunity right now. 
there are many of you some of you are coming for the first time some of you have been coming but you have never made a genuine decision for the lord jesus christ listen it all starts with a decision to come back home we do not condemn you it doesn't matter what you have done some of you have given your heart to the lord but you have found yourself derailing in a path that is not of god right now it's our joy to welcome you home and for you to start an authentic christian journey that will produce results god desires to make you an ambassador some of you your coming out is going to begin to be the beginning of salvation in your family right now while everybody is standing i want you to leave your seat and begin to come right now those who need to rededicate their hearts and those who are giving their lives don't wait for anybody to come you are the first to come god bless you god bless you thank you come and stand god bless you young old come and stand don't be emotional about it this is a very serious decision god bless you come from everywhere outside inside please don't let the devil take advantage of your life don't let the devil take advantage of your life god is giving you an opportunity to make a lasting decision leave your seat don't allow your friend or your family member come and stop you thank you jesus if you are still coming keep coming keep coming keep coming keep coming don't let the devil tell you it's too late keep coming keep coming tonight is the night for an authentic decision tonight is the night for an authentic decision don't be afraid of anybody don't be ashamed of anybody hallelujah the bible says as many who come to him he will in no wise cast away some of you are making a decision for the lord jesus christ for the first time some of you are born again you love god but you found yourself derailing and you want to mean business with god tonight it doesn't matter which of the groups I want to welcome you. We're a family here. We love you. We believe in your future and what God has to do in your life. Hallelujah. God brought you here because he wants to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number. Mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I come before you tonight unable to help myself. I have heard your word and this night i make jesus lord of my life forgive me my sins i receive remission of sins i receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm saved i'm a child of god holy spirit come and fill me build me make me an ambassador for the kingdom empower me to live the victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus Amen I salute you for making this great decision this is the greatest miracle that has happened in this place now you'll be having a word with Pastor Jakes, he's going to be meeting with you personally, he'll be following you up, please and please as much as possible I want you to be part of I want you to be part of this and make sure that you show up Wednesday by 4 please tomorrow by 4 you have a meeting with Pastor Jakes the venue is at the Chapel of Redemption just the book stand closed please those of you who invited them remind them and let them come hallelujah praise the Lord the Lord increase you the Lord bless you please follow the ushers they will have your details God bless you appreciate them just follow the ushers God bless you God bless you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we'll be out of here. This is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We want to honor you. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously and honorably. We want to pray for you. God bless you. Please leave your seat. Wherever you are, inside or outside, if there's a new person who is sitting, push the person and tell him, I love you too much. I love you too much. Hallelujah. Keep clapping, Koinonia. This is not your best. Thank you. The Lord brought them. For those of you who have made it a point of duty.
to invite people to get blessed. May the Lord invite your destiny help us into your life again and again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. We celebrate you. The Lord honor and increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will go back with unending testimonies. You will be amazed. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you. We want to pray and prophesy into your life. We are anointed people and whatever we call you, you become. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and speak those words. You are anointed. Every word you speak, the Bible says whatsoever name Adam called them, that was the name they were. Go ahead and prophesy. Declare. We call you blessed. We bless you with a hunger for the spirit. We bless you with a hunger for prayer and the word of God. We pray that the Lord will equip you and make you a giant in the spirit. Every habit, every thing that does not represent Christ in your life leaves you right now. You return as a sign and a wonder. Things will begin to fall in their place in your life. You will become a testimony even to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. We love you. We honor you. Please just follow the ushers. They will greet you more warmly on our behalf and they will give you a few information. God bless you. Please just turn back. You have the ushers. Bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.